Have a day, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of our program, The Synodal Church. Last episode, I talked to you briefly about what synodality is, its process, as well as the different meanings behind the logo. But before I go to today's topic, let me share to you a song that I really like, not just because I like the, the melody, but also the message that the lyricist tries to convey. It's about a person who tries to find his place in this world, trying to find his purpose, his meaning. And the song goes like this. Tired of weaving dreams, too loose for me to wear. Tired of watching clouds repeat their dance on air. Tired of getting tired, of doing what's required. Is life a mere routine in the greater scheme of things? Through with taking roads, someone else designed. Through with chasing stars that soon forget to shine. Through with going through one more day, what's new? Does my life still mean a thing in the greater scheme of things? I think I'll follow the voice that calls within. Dance to the silent song it sings. I hope to find my place so my life can fall in place. I know in time I'll find my place in the greater scheme of things. Each must go its way, but how can I decide which path I should take who would be my guide? I need some kind of star to lead me somewhere far, to find a higher dream in a greater scheme of things. The road before me bends. I don't know what I'll find. Will I meet a friend or ghost I left behind? Should I even be surprised that you're with me in disguise? For it's your hand I have seen in the greater scheme of things. For yours is the voice in my deepest dreams. You are the heart, the very heart of the greater scheme of things. Why don't we follow the voice that calls within? Dance to the silent song it sings. One day we'll find our place for all things fall in place. For all things have a place in the greater scheme of things. Isn't it a nice song? Isn't this the desire of every heart? To find one's place in this greater scheme of things. To find one's purpose and meaning of his life. Because failing to do so could lead him to uh, an emotional and spiritual disarray and even social disconnection wherein he will be socially detached from others. The role of the church, therefore, is to be the guiding star so that people can easily find their ways and discover their places in this greater scheme of things. But the light that the church must radiate should always be the light of Christ. The light that is always rooted in the gospel. So today, let me talk to you about the promise of synodality, or at least the hope of synodality. If we are to go back to the basic and loose meaning of the word, it means walking together. From it, we can already get a sense of an all-embracing church. It implies that a new and a more dynamic approach in terms of evangelization is a new and more dynamic form of dialogue. It challenges everyone to transcend the clericalist mentality and practice and to move towards a consultative one, wherein a huge amount of energy will be used for listening and an understanding. This is how we will be able to get a good sense of, of the entire church, the entire people of God, or the census ecclesia. However, synodality also does not eliminate the shared authority of the hierarchical church. 
The authority of the Pope, for example, remains the same, as well as that of the cardinals, the bishops, and even priests. Synodality, however, promises that this authority will be used to initiate that sense of an all-embracing church. So to get to the core of synodality, all the baptized individuals are called to participate. Each one has a voice and a sentiment to express as well as gifts and talents to share. Synodality can be the needed avenue to hear people's uh, sentiments and to benefit from their giftedness to change the face of the church. But again, to be able to reach this goal, people must be able to transcend a clericalist mentality and attitude or in. Everything flows from the ecclesial hierarchy down to the people. The Synod on Synodality could mean a beautiful but difficult transformation of a clerical church into a synodal church. According to the uh, preparatory document on the Synod on Synodality, the following are the main objectives which manifest synodality as the form, style, and culture of the church. First is recalling how the Spirit has guided the church's journey and through history and today, calls us to be together witnesses of God's love. It means that everyone needs to take a serious look at the contemporary situation we are in. We need to see what is happening around us, in the lives of people, in our society. We need to reflect on these realities and seek guidance from the gospel to see clearly how Jesus would probably respond to it. We have probably heard people say, what would Jesus do? We can use this same question to determine the will of God in our contemporary realities. For example, here in the CNMI, there is a growing concern regarding substance abuse and other forms of addiction. A good question for reflection would be, how can the church facilitate a program to address the existing problem right from its roots? So synodality then hopes for the gospel to become truly alive in, in our modern times. We will see Christ through the people who in their own ways and means are reaching out to others. The second is this. Living a participative and inclusive ecclesial process that offers everyone, especially those who are, for various reasons, find themselves on the margins. The opportunity to express themselves and to be heard in order to contribute to the edification of the people of God. It means that in order to achieve synodality, we need to create a, a platform wherein people can express freely their, uh, their sentiments so that the church can also hear them. Dialogue is an essential part of synodality. It means that the church take sometimes the easy way out wherein we'll just look around, you know, observe and base on our observation will create a plan of action but that shouldn't be the case this kind of system is clericalistic in nature it is good to observe visible realities but listening to people through dialogue could give the church a much clearer understanding of these realities synodality then promises to, to see a more inclusive church, a more open-hearted, a more open-handed and open-minded church that allows people of all ages, colors, language, and status to participate in the evangelical and corporal mission of the church. Third is recognizing and appreciating the wealth and the variety of gifts and charisms that Spirit liberally bestows for the good of community and the benefit of the entire human family. I particularly like this goal as, as I have mentioned before, 
people have strengths and talents that they can offer. I've been to uh, different churches and attended countless liturgical celebrations, but there was this particular parish wherein there's no altar server, no choir, and no one to help the priest to unlock and lock the church. It was a one-man show. Another parish I went to, and this is perhaps true to a lot of parishes, that the only choir or, or only the choir sings, people just listen. But can you imagine if all people would join the choir in singing, making joyful noise to the Lord? That would be a, that would be a dream of mine to witness. Now imagine a church or a society wherein gifts and talents are generously shared. People sharing their gifts and talents to build the church and our society. Things will be a lot easier and no hardship will ever, ever be too hard. Synodality promises to recognize the giftedness of all people, that their giftedness can be a source of blessing to others. And this promise also helps people to gain back their, their self-worth and dignity. Fourth is exploring participatory ways of exercising responsibility in the proclamation of the gospel and in the effort to build a more beautiful and habitable world. Evangelization is every baptized person's mission. To think that priests have the monopoly of mission to evangelize would be a mistake. People come to church, they listen to the homily of the priest, but evangelization is not meant to end right there at the pulpit. We are called to talk about it around the dinner table or better yet, to evangelize not with words, but with our good deeds. How we can participate in the proclamation of the gospel is something that each person need to ask themselves. Or perhaps the church can guide them so that they can be provided with options on how they, they can participate. So synodality then promises to maximize evangelical participation, to offer a more effective and productive way of bringing Christ's love to all. Fifth is this, examining how responsibility and power are lived in the church, as well as the structures by which they are managed. Bringing to light and trying to convert prejudices and distorted practices that uh, are not rooted in the gospel. The spirit of the gospel is the reason why synodality is being pursued. The good news of salvation is rooted in Christ's unfathomable and unbounded love for all. To examine how responsibility and power are lived within the church means looking at all the practices of the church to see whether or not there are practices that perhaps incongruent to gospel of values. Synodality then promises cleansing within the church. This may bring a huge amount of discomfort to a lot of people, especially those who are in the hierarchical structure of the church. But we have to remember that even those in the hierarchy are susceptible to error. We are not perfect. It takes a lot of humility on our part um, as priests and uh, bishops to make this cleansing possible. But it promises a church that is rooted in the gospel values, a church that is rooted in Christ. Another objective is to accredit the Christian community as a credible subject and reliable partner in paths of social dialogue, healing, reconciliation, inclusion and participation, uh, the reconstruction of democracy, the promotion of fraternity, and social friendship. There are many different basic ecclesial communities with the Catholic Church or within the Catholic Church. These are small communities of faith who work for the Church in their own capacities and giftedness. Here in the CNMI, for example, we have the Couples for Christ, and they are all over the world. 
We have El Shaddai prayer group. We have the Christian mothers and many more. And these communities have their own identity and charism, but they all work for one common goal. And that is for the salvation of souls. And this is also the goal of the Catholic Church. So synodality promises to recognize them as essential and willing partners of the church's evangelical mission. It is unfortunate though, that now we hear labels within the Catholic Church, labels that are rather divisive. For example, labels like, oh, this is conservative, or, and the other one is traditionalist. These labels only promote factions within the, the body of Christ. So Synodality hopes to heal this divisive label so that we can work together as one. Seven, regenerating relationships among members of the Christian communities as well as between communities and other social groups like communities of believers or other denominations and religions, civil society, organizations, popular movements, and so on. The Church aims to renew, reinvigorate, restore, and reinforce relationships between Christian communities as well as other social groups that for some reasons have fallen away or have distanced themselves due to perhaps on the Church's failure to, to reach out to them or perhaps for not getting them involved in the life of ministry. The Church hopes to work hand in hand with every social group reach out to them and develop a strong relationship with them. We are walking on the same planet, however, we tend to ignore either intentionally or unintentionally others who walk along with us. So we pretty much walk on our own or do our own thing in our own ways and with our own means, not realizing that we are slowly growing apart until the thread of unity is unfortunately out, unfortunately cut. Synodality promises to collect all the scattered pieces of this great puzzle and put it together to create a beautiful picture. Finally, fostering the appreciation and uh, appropriation of the fruits of the recent synodal experiences on the universal, the regional, national, and local levels. In the process of putting together the puzzle, we have to recognize, acknowledge, and accept the differences of every individual, every sector, social group. But more importantly, we also need to acknowledge that, that these differences have places in the puzzle, that there is a spot wherein a piece can perfectly fit. We have to respect the differences of every person, every sector, every social and, and church groups and help them find their place in a greater scheme of things. So as we therefore walk together towards the Synodal Church, let us pray. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Jesus and Pambinandisit.